Anthony Burgess had a difficult journey to the Caribbean. He writes, I was called on in Monaco to fly to San Juan in Puerto Rico to talk about communications to a conference of American magazine proprietors. At the airport of the Côte d'Azur, whence I had first to fly to Paris en route to New York, I was asked to check my suitcase, but I said I preferred to do that at Charles de Gaulle, after having stuffed with duty-free liquor and panatellas the ample space that Travelling Light provides. But it turned out that this was the last chance to stow luggage for New York. At Charles de Gaulle, there were buses to take one to the various terminals for overseas flights. And I lugged my bag aboard a bus that took me to the wrong one. That it was the wrong one, I only discovered when stuffing time had arrived. I had to replace my goods back on the shelves under the supervision of a bossy, thin blonde suitable for the post of monitrix at the Cannes Film Festival. Then I had to take another bus. This time I arrived at the Concord Terminal where I stuffed without opposition. The bar for Concord travellers opened, but ice was slow to arrive. An attack of malaria came over me. When ice arrived, I drank deep. I hefted my bag aboard and was schoolmistressly rebuked for not checking it. Then the Concord staff decided on a three-hour strike. The bar was closed. Three and a half hours late, we took off and were served an endless dinner of nameless fish compounds and strange meats. We arrived at Kennedy Airport. I had missed my flight to San Juan. The next one would be at midnight. The terminal was crammed with Puerto Ricans and there was no room to sit down. I tried to sleep off my malarial attack on the floor, head on goods crammed bag. I was kicked awake by a cop. That cop threatened me with arrest for an unspecified irregularity. Then, while his hand was in, he took away a Puerto Rican youth for leisurely threatening. I grabbed the youth's seat. I was sitting next to a Puerto Rican girl reading Ernest Hemingway. She kept saying, We boarded. We landed at San Juan Airport in the very small hours. There were no taxis. There was no means of reaching the remote, fortress-like hotel where I and the magazine proprietor's conference had been booked. At four in the morning, a gypsy motorman offered to take me whither I wished to go for fifty dollars. He scoured the island, but could not find the hotel. At 5.35, he found it. It was in sumptuous grounds, guarded by men in green uniforms with rifles. At 6, I was in bed. At 6.30, I was awakened with... Never again, I will not leave Europe.